Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Legislative Lens Spotlighting State Laws podcast. And this episode is pretty much a controversial one as you can get. It's Senate Bill 12 out of the 88th legislature in Texas, which is banning uh, banning of drag shows in front of minors. Uh, and this law is controversial as it gets. And actually, it's been adjudicated and under the ju- judiciary, and it's already going to the 5th District Court of Appeals and the federal government side of appeals. So uh, just kind of go into this. It's It's straightforward as it can get guys i i can't stress this enough this law is it just wow here it it was uh, a law that was when signed uh it was senate bill 12 which goes and got into effect in september 1st of 2023 it originally uh it it had some ser- serious ser- serious implications here the law bans real or simulated groping real or simulated arousal and display of sexual toys or sexual actions if done in a prudent, uh, unprudent manner in front of a minor or a public property, drag artists uh, is were included in this with drag shows, um, and, and this really is where things got pretty weary here in the state of Texas when it came to First Amendment rights and and just judiciary here. Um, originally. Originally, it sought to classify all drag shows as sexual performances due to legislative process, but it it changed the language of the bill drastically from the origination to the signing. And it it got to a point where it it became very broad and overly broad in the language used in Senate Bill 12. And it got to a point where obviously the ACLU got involved and filed a uh, amicus brief and, and filed a, you know, a uh, rear situary uh, and, and brought this to the federal side once it became law. Um, under this law, however, if it is, remains to be true on the books here, it's only time will tell here because it's going to go through the judicial process but under the original law business owners would be fined ten thousand dollars for hosting said sexual explicit performances uh, which someone is is nude or appears to be uh, a prudent interest in sex performers caught violating the the proposed restriction could be slapped with a class a misdemeanor which carries a maximum penalty of a year in jail and a four thousand dollar fine that was the original proposal of the law and it really was at the forefront was focusing on uh, trying to keep young people away from said sexual explicit activities and, and things along that lines due to there was a pretty uproar uh, as they were seeing it more and more in the suburbs at, at bars and restaurants and things like that. OK, so. Kind of going into the implications of it, I think the implications are what they stand on the bill of, but it's going through the judicial process now. They filed a lawsuit um, being represented by the ACLU of Texas, argue that the Senate Bill 12 are, violates the First and Fourteenth Amendment because of the law discriminates against the content and viewpoints of performances and imposes prior restraint on free expression. Uh, the second lawsuit was filed by the Texas Civil Rights Project. Uh, reshape the landscape of performing arts in Texas. And the group is seeking a temporary injunction before the law goes into effect. That was in August. So the law got signed into effect. And just give you a precursor of what ended up happening is that the language of the law was so gray area to the point where it was very, very, It, it was so a gray area that it could actually people that if you uh, go through the law, it can be you can be criminally charged for anything from a pride parade to a bachelorette party. So it, the law was so gray, it got away from its original intent of the law. And I think a lot of adults can agree that children should not be seeing explicit uh, sexually explicit materials at a young age but i think the law the ring language of the law got too far outside of what the scope 
of the original tent was. And so this kind of give you a, a forecast of what actually happened here was uh, on September, I think it was 28th of 23. Um, a judge, a federal judge out of the, of the city of Houston out of the, and blocked it, blocked the law becoming law and said that it was makes it uh, illegal for sexual. And, and really it made it, it say this is what actually the judge said in his ruling, U.S. District Judge David Hetner of Houston said the state law is overly broad and infringes on the first amendment and chills free speech. A large amount of constitutionality protected conduct can and will be wrapped up in the enforcement of Senate bill 12. It is not unreasonable to read Senate bill 12 and conclude that activities such as cheerleading, dancing, live theater, and other common public occurrences could possibly become a civil or criminal violation of Senate bill 12. The federal judge isn't wrong here. So this is where it's going to be continually argued in the judiciary because or it's going to be rewritten and, and kind of go back to it. I, I understand that the the idea of the law, right? I understand the context of the law and way it's written. But the language used in the statutory written requirement of the law is too broad and it's not a good one. So in this particular episode, I want you guys to understand that it does. I understand we're going over laws that were passed in the 88th legislature, which is the most recent legislature, including some special special sessions. But this law has actually been adjudicated and is being continued to be adjudicated in the in the federal court system as of this moment. Because of the First Amendment rights issues. And really, it could all be avoided if the language of the law explicitly stated certain actions or certain conduct that is, for example, shows that are considered to be drag shows. Those, I understand that some people can see that as violating their First Amendment right. But however, when you got to this gray area of the law, it got very, very convoluted. And it was a very, very not 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 good law. Um, I understand the intent of the law could be great. And I appreciate the lawmaker's intent. The intent of the law means well. However, it's a terrible law in writing. I appreciate everyone joining me here on another episode of the legislative lens. I appreciate it. Always feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. All the fun things that go on in the feedback part of the life of doing a podcast. Appreciate it as always. Have a good rest of your remaining of your week. Thank you.